Hi, I'm Wendy Gardner and I'm going to sew this wonderful Macau fabric advent calendar. It comes as a pre-printed panel and then all you need to add is backing and wadding. The fabric has the printed panel with the pocket placement marked and the individual numbered pockets too. Some of these pockets you cut out individually, others are cut out in groups. The first step is to cut out the panel. Cut out around the dark red border using sharp scissors or of course you can use a rotary cutter and mat. Next cut out the pockets. As I said, some you can cut out individually and others in groups. You can tell where to cut by the solid lines. These show individual pockets. These pockets are grouped and have faint dotted blue lines between them, so these are cut out together. These have solid lines between them, so they're individual pockets. Alternatively, cut the pockets out with a rotary cutter. The next step is to fold down the top edge to the wrong side and press in place. Do this on all of the pockets. On the individual pockets you can save some time by turning under the bottom edge and pressing this too. It will save you doing it later. Using the edge of the presser foot as a guide for the edge of the fabric, move the needle across to the right with the stitch width button so you can top stitch the turned pocket tops in place nice and neatly. Just go from one pocket to the next with a few stitches on nothing in between. This is so much quicker and saves on thread. Once they're all sewn, you now cut them apart so you're back to your individual or grouped pocket pieces. Press the stitched tops and then turn in the sides on the individual pockets so that all edges are now pressed under. Once this is done, and all of the individual pockets are pressed with all the sides pressed in, the pockets will be ready to attach to the panel. For the grouped pockets, pinch a fold in the pocket edge and fold it towards the blue dotted line. Press in place with a hot iron, and then repeat for the other side. Pin the folds in place so that they're held at the bottom of the pocket and that the folds are butted up against each other against that blue line. To hold the folds in place, stitch just inside the seam allowance. Working from the wrong side, turn up the bottom edge and press and then finish the grouped pockets by pressing in the side edges too. Pin the pockets to the panel over their printed counterparts. Note how the printed patterns all line up so beautifully. Now it's time to sew on the pockets. Line up the edge of the pocket with the inner edge of the right toe on the presser foot so you can edge stitch the pocket in place down the sides and across the bottom. 
at the corners, stop with the needle down, raise the presser foot, pivot the fabric, lower the presser foot and then continue. On the group pockets you then need to stitch along the blue dotted line, keeping the pocket folded out of the way. Don't try and start at the very bottom, just about 6mm or a quarter of an inch from the end and then stitch the pocket top, reverse stitching to secure. Once all the pockets are attached, we're now ready to turn our attention to the backing and adding the wadding. Cut the backing and wadding slightly larger than the pocket panel. Also cut a casing for the baton, 8 cm or 3 inches wide, by the width of the panel less 8 cm or 3 inches. Turn the short ends of the casing under twice to form narrow hems and stitch in place. Once that's done, Press under the long edges by 1 cm or 3 eighths of an inch and then position the casing on the backing fabric 5 cm or 2 inches from the top edge, centred widthways. Stitch along the top long edge of the casing. I've used the inner edge of the presser foot as a guide. Gently push the bottom edge of the casing up a little towards the top, creating a tunnel pin and then stitch in place. This helps the panel stay flat when the batten is inserted. Working on a flat surface, lay the wadding down first, then the backing right side up, and then the panel right side down, smoothing the layers carefully as you go. Pin around the edges, pinning every sort of five inches or so. And then we're going to stitch around the inner edge of the dark border. If you have one, attach your walking foot, making sure that the bar on the foot goes over the needle bar on the machine. Start sewing midway along the bottom edge and leave a turning gap in the bottom edge, which I always mark with a double pin to remind me to stop sewing. I've also increased the stitch length to three because I'm stitching through layers and wadding and using the inner edge of the red border as my guide. As you get to the corner, stop with the needle down, raise the presser foot, pivot the fabric, lower the presser foot and continue. Leaving the turning gap untrimmed, trim the rest of the seam allowance down to about half, so about a quarter of an inch, and when you get to the corners, cut the corners at an angle. Once you've trimmed the panel all the way round, cutting all of the corners at an angle, you're ready to turn it through. So put your hand inside between the fabric layers and pull it through, going to the bottom corner first. Once you've turned it all the way through, you can push out the corners using a point turner or a knitting needle. Once it's all turned through, tuck up the raw edges of the turning gap and press them in place and then slip stitch that closed by hand. Having slip stitched that by hand, you can machine top stitch around the inner edge of the red border if you wish. There we are, finished. I'm Wendy Gardner. I hope you've enjoyed this Macawa Advent Calendar tutorial. A step-by-step -step guide to accompany this video is free to download from macawauk.com.